All right, Tom, so it's summertime, it's outdoor cooking time, steaks, burgers, anything like that. And when you think custom meat shop, you think good fresh meat. What do we have right here? Well, we, we came into the, the cooler here where we've got some beef, and I wanted to show some differences between a good fed beef and the canner cutter type. This is a, a, like a dairy cow that, uh, that's probably only good for hamburger. It'd be tough. It doesn't have very much feed. It hasn't softened up. So when you're looking for a, a beef that you can get good steaks from, you want to make sure there's a good layer of, of cover fat. That's an indication that it has, uh, it has been fed. When we cut inside here, we'll have some marbling. We'll show you some when we get into actually cutting some steaks that we've already boned out. Uh, but you want to make sure that your beef has been fed well and, and so there's some good marbling in it. You don't want something that's so lean that it's, uh, it it's doesn't have any fat in it at all. There's just not flavor there for it. So, so that's what we're looking for. Well, good. It looks good here, and I like the fact that you can see what we're uh, going to get. And uh, let's go into the shop and cut some of these steaks. All right, Tom, so you are the only custom meat shop in Logan, but what does that mean, custom meat shop? We've got some slabs of beef here, and I'm guessing you're going to tell me what they are and how they work, right? Uh, we can do that. All right. this, is, this is a loin. We were just throwing it out in the cooler. The, uh, the fed beef, this one has been boned out already. This is a New York loin, or, uh, and we'll trim some fat off from it. Uh, it's because it has that good heavy cover of fat like we said we want for a good flavor beef. So we'll trim some fat and we'll get it down to, I like to go to right, right on a quarter inch or less. Now some people will try to leave more than that. I, I disagree with that. The trick is, is to get it consistently with that cover fat on it. Now, because it's a custom meat shop, if somebody comes in and says, I want an inch on there because they're going to do something else with it, you can do that? We have not very often had people ask for additional fat, you know, a heavier cover fat. Uh, the higher the grade of beef, uh, the more fat there is. The grades of beef are covered, are, 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 is the amount of fat. Prime is, has a heavier marbling and a heavier cover fat. Choice has a good layer of fat. Select has uh, just maybe barely a quarter of an inch in most places. And so, uh, so the higher the grade, the more fat there is. And the grade doesn't necessarily grade the meat as much as it does the fat because they figure that's where the marbling the, comes from. Now you can see that we've, we've trimmed that off to, uh, I cut that tail off and a lot of stores will leave a, a longer tail. When I worked in the retail stores, it was a, a longer tail was required. So that's a good New York uh, loin there now. Uh, and people like uh, different thicknesses. Now, now this one's a New York. Uh, a ribeye already has the, uh, the cover fat pretty much removed uh, because it's the ribeye. This, this is the loins that come down the back. And so uh, here's the bones from the ribs and around to the back. Uh, again, it has a longer tail then I like to leave on for my steaks, so I'll trim that off. These are the three, well, tenderloin, New York, or tenderloin, ribeye, and New York are the top three. Top sirloin is the, is the third. The, I'm, I'm guessing by as, as good as you're uh, wielding this knife here and sliding it around, you've been doing this a few, few times, a few years. How many years have you been doing this? Boy, I'd have to stop and count now. Uh, uh, I, I, I was fired when I was four years old from bagging hamburger patties in the basement of my dad's shop uh, because I was too noisy. But uh, I've kind of been around the meat business my whole life. Uh, by the time I was 18, I, uh, I was boning turkeys, uh, and I got up to the speed of one per minute uh, boning the turkeys. Uh, now, now, I was going to tell you, this is a, a top sirloin. Okay. And a top sirloin is what I consider the lowest qual the, the, low, the bottom end of the steak meat. If you go to sirloin tip, it's going to be tough. So I, uh, I don't want to go to, I don't sell sirloin tip. Okay. That's a, to me, that's roast meat. It's okay. And so, uh, okay, we have trimmed up 
some of these pieces of meat, these sirloin New York top sirlo or ribeye. I have one here that uh, I've been cutting on. It's already wrapped up. This is a New York. When you cut it, you can see the marbling in there. Uh, it has fat inside it. It has a little cover of fat. That's, as that, that'll kind of base that meat as it cooks. Your ribeye has, and I'm going to cut this in a little bit thinner. Some people like them thinner. Some people like them thinner. Thicker. The, uh, the thicker it is, the more juicy it's going to be in the middle. Okay. It'll be easier to keep it rare. This one, we'll talk about how to cook another time, but, okay. uh, but this one uh, will cook faster than this, this thicker one, and so it's going to be hard to keep it rare in the middle if you like it rare. Now some people like little roasts, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, very flavorful, juicy, and so uh, here I'm cutting it with this plastic on. Uh, ribeyes are very similar in cutting. You can see some marbling in the ribeye here. Uh, ribeyes have a different, the fat's on the outside on a New York. Ribeye, the fats are kind of mixed through it. It's a little more tender than the New York in general. Uh, and so there's so you can cut to different thicknesses or different uh, cuts of steak, whatever the customer wants. Well, whoever they're cooking for, whatever the party calls for, you can do all the different things here. And, right. and, and that's what makes it a custom meat shop, I think. And that's what I think is, is very unique to what you do here. It's a great looking product. Uh, the marbling, like you say, that's, it's neat to see that and, and how well marbled it is. And the different thicknesses. My wife likes them done. I like them not so done, so we would be different thicknesses on there. Well, that, that would do, it would be best. Now I just cut a top sirloin here while you were saying that. Uh, you can see the differences between the ribeye, New York, top sirloin. Different beef has different amounts of marbling. There, there might be more marbling in another ribeye and less in a, another New York. Top sirloin in general is leaner. In today's time we're going with more and more lean cuts and that's good. It's good for our heart, good for our health. Uh, in our store we do some things because we take some time. We, we do some things to, to make sure it's tender. We take some more time uh, and we can guarantee the tenderness of our top sirloin where most stores don't take that time. They just don't have that sure. time. Sure. And because we're, we're a custom shop we, we feel like we need to do something more for them. Well, and I, you can see the leanness of a top sirloin. The cost is less, just about half the price of a ribeye. And so, uh, so I personally like the leanness. Uh -huh. I go for top sirloin and the price. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, the price makes the difference for me. You bet. So you can see at a custom meat shop, you get quality, you get custom, but you get expertise too. So if you come here not knowing what do you want, ask those questions. They can help you out. The other thing is a lot of times you'll get tight with time and you need something that's already pre-done. They've got that here too. So if you don't have time to buy the raw steak and do that, go ahead and, and they've got barbecue chicken, barbecue pork, and barbecue beef right here in the bag ready to go. You can freeze it. You can go ahead and cook it, uh, reheat it. Very simple, easy to do. Cooking part's already done. So depending on what you need, Core Lockers has got it all. You could design an outdoor kitchen at a price you could afford. With Camp Chef's durable cooking equipment, you can own a custom kitchen that's built to last for years. You can grill, bake, boil, deep fry, and saute right in your own patio or backyard. Transform your Camp Chef into a griddle, barbecue box, or high output burner in just minutes. Best of all, you can quickly load up your Camp Chef gear and turn your campsite into a gourmet kitchen anywhere. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. I'm Steve from Camp Chef, and a lot of you are familiar with the Pro 60 stove. 
It's what started uh, Camp Chef so many years ago. Uh, we've got the barbecue box that sits on top of it. You can also put Dutch ovens. You can put canning pots. A lot of people in the fall will do canning pots. Today we've got the barbecue box on top of here. A great way to cook outdoors, whether you're at home, at the park, tailgate, hunt camp, wherever you're at. This is a great way to cook outdoors. This is the big box, one of our biggest boxes actually, so it's, it's made for cooking a lot for a lot of people and, and a lot of food. The nice thing is, is with multiple burners under here, you can be hot over here and cool over here. You can cook at different temperatures, so if you're doing steak, chicken, whatever, you, you can do that. And all of our Pro Series stoves, you've got the shelves built into it. This particular one, we've got the legs that fold underneath it. So some nice features that make the Pro Series stove just that much better than our other ones. Um, but if you don't need that much space or that much uh, room on the grill, you can come over here to our single burner stove. This is our newest one, the Pro 30. Again, we've got the shelves here. The legs um, come up higher on that, so it's a little easier to work with, a little bit taller. Um, today, we've got this barbecue box on top of it. If you lift that barbecue box off of there, you can see it's just a regular burner underneath there. You can put a griddle or anything else, again, Dutch ovens, canning pots, whatever. But today we've got a barbecue box, so same thing here. Pre-seasoned cast iron grill surface, great way to cook outdoors. Anyone that's ever cooked in any sort of cast iron understands just how nice it can be. Uh, and last but not least for us is a nice little kitchen tool set. Comes with that case, nice little carry handle there, but you open it up and you've got everything basically you'd need when cooking outdoors. You've got a cutting board here, we've got five knives, from bread knives all the way down to a small paring knife, we've got nice kitchen shears, and even a carving forks. So everything you need right here in this kitchen tool set, compact, packs down real easy, high quality, good sharp blades ready to cook wherever you're headed. So whatever your outdoor adventure takes you and whatever you want to cook, Camp Chef will make it taste that much better. Tom, so smoke, grill, you're already grilling, you're already cooking, what's going on here? Well, we started we started a little early because the uh, bratwurst uh, take a little bit longer to, to cook. So we, we put them on just a few minutes ago. We want to get them started in. Uh, and uh, they're, they're starting to cook pretty good. We better get our steaks on here real quick. And so uh, let's, let's look at these steaks for just a minute. Then we'll, uh, then we'll come back to the brats. What we yesterday or, or earlier we cut these uh, ribeyes and these New Yorks, the top sirloin, and I also cut some pork chops. Okay. And so uh, we thought we'd just grill a few different things. I have some, I have some thicker, thicker New Yorks, some thinner ones. Uh, we talked about the differences in the uh, in what the people, you know, might like sure. well done or or, uh, or more rare. Uh, and so we'll just throw them on now. I also have have some chicken breasts here. Uh, maybe we'll put them on. These are fairly big chicken breasts, so maybe we better put them on now. Okay. We want them fully cooked. Okay. And so uh, we'll, we'll get them on right now. Uh, we'll put them on this side that's a little bit cooler. So, and you, and you bring up on this left side here, we do have that cooler, hence the bratwurst over there. It's going to take a little bit longer for them. Um, whereas on the right side here, we've got a lot of heat coming there. So we're going right. to sear those steaks, right? Right. Okay. Uh, and so we'll, we'll put these in a little bit cooler and let them cook. Uh, we'll probably be pulling the bratwurst off earlier and we can start nibbling on those while the steaks are finishing off. They're looking good. That, that moisture coming out of them and, and brats are summer pastime right we, there. We have cheese brats. Three of these are cheese brats and four of them are just a German brat. And so they are, uh, the cheese you can see kind of oozing out of the casing there now. Okay, let's put on the, the pork we want to make sure. Oops, hot. We, <laughs> the pork we want to make sure is well done. I have these thicker pork chops. I'm going to put them on right now on this side. Okay. I have some thinner ones we'll put on in just a minute. Let's put on our, uh, uh, some of our ribeyes and New Yorks too. Okay. okay. And now what we like to do is, is get this nice and hot. 
so we get it to sear the juices in. Uh, we we want the the juices to to seal in, in into uh -huh. the side. So we'll we'll sear this one side. We have it turned up fairly hot. We do. And and we'll sear this side, and then we will turn it over. Okay. And then we will uh, sear the other side and turn the temperature down. And let them cook on through. Perfect. And so uh, we have just a minute now to to let them sear. We need to turn the temperature down now because they're hot. We need to get, we've seared this side by now. So we'll turn the temperature down uh, to, a, to a low so we can cook them through to the middle. Okay. Uh, we, we also, looking at these brats, they look like they're about done. I think we ought, to, yeah. we ought to get them off so then we can add some more things to this other side here. We'll get these cheese brats off. Those are looking real good. I like that. That uh, you know, cooked them just right there. It seems to me, browned them up nice. Right. Uh, these these brats are very basic seasoning. They are uh, uh, lemon. Uh, excuse me, not lemon. Onion, salt, and pepper, and then we add the cheese for the cheese brats. Uh huh. And so, uh, very basic. Very very basic. Let's put on, let's see, I want to turn over these. Got the chicken breasts going there. Yeah, they're, they're going to take those are, a Those are big, thick breasts, full chicken breasts there. So what we want to do there is probably, that's why we've got them on this side, lower right. temp. Let them go. We don't want to burn them. We'll, we'll put um, this over on this side. we got them quite low. Let's put the uh, these pork chops on. Okay. On this side. These are thin, butterflied ones, thinner butterflied ones. Twice as big, but twice as the diameter, but they're uh, uh, boneless pork chop. We'll put them on there, and we'll just let them get their cooking done now. So, question for you on the seasoning. I noticed you didn't season anything there. Do you normally do you season it sometimes before you cook, after sauces? Tell me how you do that. Uh, the the so chicken was lemon pepper seasoned okay. before we started. Okay. Uh, and so uh, the others, we can start to put the seasoning on now, okay. and it's, it's probably a good idea, uh, good reminder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just curious because a lot of people do it different, and some people swear by doing it earlier in the cooking. Other people say you got to do it later in the cooking. So, and I know you guys do a bunch of good seasonings there at Horlocker, so that's why I wanted to see what you brought. Often we will season this the steaks when they come to buy them. That kind of lets them marinate. The, the one thing I wonder about that is the salt. Mm -hmm. The salt that's in the seasoning kind of helps draw the moisture to the outside. So I like to wait till they get seared. Okay. And so uh, I, we have here a Montreal and then our, our house brand, uh, our house steak seasoning. And so I'm going to put some on each of these. Uh, and, and just because it says steak seasoning on it doesn't mean it's just for steak, right? We can put it on chicken, we can put it on pork, we can put it on vegetables even, right? I mean, it's good on anything. We can put it on almost anything we want. Uh, some said they like this Montreal, so we're going to put that on. Uh, I also have a steak and chop rub here. Uh, it's a combination, steak and chop. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that on. Uh, I'll put some on this so we can taste the difference. Okay. Now you mentioned uh, when people come in to buy steaks, you'll put it on their steaks for them if they'd like when they buy them. But could they come in and buy that container like that if they really like that and, and really enjoy it? Do you yes. sell the spices separate? Yes, we do. We do have the, the seasoning spices for you uh, if you'd like to buy them. And, uh, I often tell people that it's not the seasoning that makes the meat, it's the meat that makes the meat. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, the seasoning does add uh, for those who like it. Well, and, and whatever does make it for the person, you've got them both. So you've got it all there. You can go there, um, get great meat, custom cuts as we talked about. Um, and, and you guys are a custom shop. There's yeah. something to be said for that. Right.
So if smells are any indication of what's to come, I'm thinking we're getting close to done because this is smelling pretty good. What do you think? Right now, these steaks are we're rare. Okay. Uh, they're, they're still running quite red. Uh, the juices are starting to clear up a little bit as they're running out. And, and so uh, that means they're getting close to, uh, to, to well enough. Okay. Uh, now, if you like them not rare, but if you like them uh, well done, or medium, you might want to cook them a little longer. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cut this. Yeah. And, and you get a pretty good look at the end there when you cut that open and see that, and you get a good look that it's probably a rare to medium rare, I would say, right? Right. That's that's a that's a rare to medium rare. Uh, we're going to cook these a little bit more, but then we'll take them off uh, a little bit early and then let them sit. Let this juice is kind of. You equalize bet. and these seasonings kind of soak on through. Well, and uh, it's, I'm going to shake a little more seasoning on. And once you take the meat off of the grill here, it does continue to cook just a little bit. So you're right. We've, we take it off. We let it rest. We let it kind of sit there for a bit. The the uh, juices, the moisture equalizes and distributes back around. And so resting is is a big key to what goes on here. We sear it and we let it rest. Right. I'm going to close that down. Keep the heat in there. Uh, uh, at this point, we could probably, it would probably be good to add our pre-cooked items like uh, uh, like hot dogs, uh, smoked sausage. Okay. Uh, oftentimes, if you wanted to take smoked sausage, put them on early, or hot dogs and put them on early when you first start your steaks, they'd be already yeah. warmed up. You yeah. don't need to cook them. They're yeah. already cooked. Yeah. You just got to get them warmed. Then you can already let the kids start to eat, or you can nibble on a smoked sausage or something like that. And so I'm going to I'm going to open up some smoked sausage here, and uh, and throw a smoked sausage on there, a couple smoked sausage, and then we also have these dinner franks. Uh, these are quarter pound. They're a really a good a good high quality dinner frank. Uh, a lot of people say. Uh, they want all beef because beef are the best. I disagree. Pork, the fat that's in pork is a milder fat. It's more mellow and it, uh, if you eat a cold hot dog that's made with beef fat, you'll feel the grease on the roof of your mouth. Uh -huh. A pork fat hot dog will, it doesn't have beef fat, uh -huh. it's made with just pork, the, the fat from the pork. It won't stick on the top of your mouth. Uh -huh. It more flows at body temperature. It's more palatable, huh. and so I like the pork you over bet. the all beef, uh, and so uh, I don't mind beef, but but I like that for the lean. Okay. And I, if there has to be a certain amount of pork for flavor, fat for flavor, and I like the pork. pork. Okay. And so this is a beef and pork hot dog. No chicken. Okay. Now let's let's leave the chicken out, and we can talk of that another time. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> these are no chicken, and so. Uh, uh, well, I'll certainly take your word for it because if uh, word of mouth is any sort of indication, I've heard a lot of good things about both the smoked sausage and these dinner franks. So I think uh, I think it's going to be pretty good. Well, we uh, we enjoy them. Uh, at this point, maybe we better uh, for those who wanted a rarer steak, we better get them off. Uh, and uh, maybe put on some other steaks and let them. Cook. See, now that juice is running clear now, that's oozing out. This is a ribeye. Here we have a top sirloin. Here we have a New York. Let's see, let's see those. Those are, those are good looking uh, steaks there. A nice big thick cut here, a, a skinnier cut, a thinner cut there. Um, so this one's going to be done a little bit more than that one, but great looking cuts. Right. I, I, I'm getting hungrier. <laughs> I was hungry when I started, but I'm hungry now. So our thicker pork chops there, which is the way I like it. I, those big, thick pork chops are the way to do it. And we've done a good job of searing them and now turning it down and letting them do their thing. It's it's uh, oops, a, a good way to tell if your pork chop is done, as soon as the pink is gone from the inside. Okay. As soon as the pink is gone from the inside, it is fully cooked. As soon as it's changed that okay. uh, light gray color, okay. it's fully cooked. And it looks like it is to me. That one looks like it's gone. So a lot of people say that we've got to cook our pork really well, and so they they overcook it. They burn it, and they uh, to me they burn it. They they get it way overcooked, and so let's not overcook them. Let's just get them so that okay. as soon as the pink's gone, you're done. That you you're past that hundred and 
uh, 60 degree temperature that, that makes sure that the, the trichinosis is gone. These we put on a lower temperature. They're, they're not finished on this side. Okay. Uh, now, now I know my wife is going to be at home watching this smiling because she's going to say he's overcooked it way too many times and guilty as charged. I'm getting better. Tom, you're teaching me a lot here. I appreciate it. It's looking good. And uh, I think we'll keep letting these, the chicken there, we'll keep letting those cook. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing what they turn out here pretty soon. Hi, I'm Randy Anderson, owner of Master Mechanic in Providence. Every repair we do at Master Mechanic comes with our peace of mind guarantee, meaning all repairs are guaranteed for three years or 36,000 miles. That's triple the industry standard. Summer travel time is here. Before you hit the road, stop by and have our ASC certified technicians inspect your vehicle. Prevent vacation breakdowns with our pre-trip inspection. Master Mechanic in Providence, taking the worry out of summer travel. I guarantee it. Now with print, online, and mobile offerings, the Herald Journal gives you easy access to the news that matters to you. The paper's here! We're delivering quality local news to more readers than ever, in more ways than ever. Subscribe today. The Herald Journal. Empowering the community. Jennifer's? Mom, everyone does it. It's called sharing. Is that another word for cheating? Mom, Dad, love us enough to ask the important questions. Because if you don't, who will? From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mm. 